As Lucy Johnson's house on Hidden Meadow Court smolders, Gaston County, North Carolina police are feeling the pressure. A nurse and caring mother of two with another baby on the way. Her badly scorched body found atop her burning bed. The police interrogation room needs a revolving door with a long list of exes from two husbands, a former boyfriend, and a fiance to question. Which way to turn? Everyone is watching, including local TV reporter Ken Lemon. The thing that I think really drew people in is that you have a single mother, and she was excited about her you know, relationship and her engagement with this man. Where would the evidence lead police? First, a quick search of the house shown in this police video seems to rule out a stranger. No evidence of a break-in here. The locks are still intact. She was killed in her home. That's a total violation. And the belief is that she was killed in her home by somebody she knew, not by a stranger. Next, police move to the autopsy sketch. The medical examiner must have worn out his pen, illustrating the terrible damage. And there, inside Lucy's head, a find that will change the investigation. A bullet, and then more. Fragments of a second bullet. Conclusion, Lucy was shot twice in the back of the head. Now, it's not only an arson case. Now, friends, we have a murder. The very public search for a killer is on and local media is watching. Still many questions today about a fire that took the life of a pregnant mother. We have several people of interest that we're looking at right now. So everybody's watching. People wanted to know who did this. Another clue from the crime scene, the burned out house. Lucy's engagement ring can't be found anywhere. But also missing, and perhaps even more important, is a murder weapon. Where is the gun? Dive crews are back at Lake Wiley looking for evidence to solve a pregnant mother's murder. They target an area near a boat landing, not far from the home of a potential suspect, Lucy's ex-boyfriend, Jim Spielock. Two days of diving for a weapon didn't produce anything. There's no weapon. There's, There's no, no gun weapon. found. There's nothing. With no fingerprints, everything destroyed in the burned out house, no murder weapon, and no eyewitnesses to the crime, police must now turn to the circumstantial clues, starting with the men in Lucy's life. Lucy's uncle, Ken Dye, saw them come and saw them go. She made some men angry. She is. Gaston County Police open up the interrogation room. They bring in Philip Okralisa for questioning. He's Lucy's first husband and the father of her daughter, Lauren. When they were together, Okralisa was arrested for domestic violence twice. He comes in to tell police he never really hit Lucy, but he did grab her. But that trail cools when Okralisa has a tight alibi. The night of the fire, he says he was home all night, and his new wife confirms it. On to Lucy's husband number two, Jim Johnson, another relationship that got ugly at the end. He has a police record of violence against Lucy. And Lucy's friend Dina says she witnessed one incident. He had her cornered, drilling her like a sergeant, barking at her, verbally, loud. She was afraid. She was very afraid. He was a suspect because he had threatened to burn her house down. That's a pretty good reason to be a suspect, right? Right, right. But more investigation shows Johnson was on the Carolina coast, four hours away at the time of the crime, forcing police to dismiss him as a suspect. So now we turn our attention to Mike Mee, Lucy's new fiance and father-to-be. Mike and Lucy's romance was so recent. That day at the fire was the first time her uncle Ken Dye had ever seen him. I didn't know who he was. Never met him before, didn't recognize him. And then I noticed that the detectives put him in the car and was talking to him. But of all the stops on Lucy Johnson's troubled trail of romance, one man stood out, at least to family and friends. Oh, yes. At the very, very beginning, I thought Jim Spelock had did it. Everyone did. James Spelock, the father of Lucy's infant son, is in the family's crosshairs. Lucy's father, Mike Dye. The son killed my daughter. Ken Dye says his mother, who raised Lucy from when she was a teenager, was convinced the minute she heard about the fire. She said, I know who done it. I said, who done it? She said, Jim Spelock done it. I knew immediately he did it. It's just something I felt in the pit of my stomach. Why? Because of the constant threats and the constant ongoing struggles they had. There wasn't a single day 
from the day I met Lucy till the day that she died that we didn't have some conversation about Jim Spilock. Was she afraid of him? Absolutely. How do you know that? And he threatened to burn her house down. He threatened to cut her up and feed her to the pigs. She used to tell me all the time that he would tell her that he could kill her without coming in the house because he was a certified sniper. What do you believe set him off this time? Desperation. Lucy's marrying a successful guy that's going to be able to support her financially. Lucy's moving. It is documented Spelock has been fighting with Lucy over child support and custody. Lucy has pictures of bruises on her arms and in family court claims Spelock put them there while she was pregnant with their son. The relationship so poisonous, Jim Spelock had been recording their conversations. You're a very sneaky, manipulative person, well, and you're that ain't gonna work. A manipulative person, Jim. I'm not. You're the one that did all of that. You're the one that was at the lawyer's office the day after I gave birth. I wasn't at the office. The I was on the phone you're with You're concerned with yourself. That's Jim Speedlock documenting his attempts to see his son. Do you plan on paying child support voluntarily? Well, I guess that's up to you. Can I see my son or not? I've seen him like five times since he's been born. Are yes, you going to let me bring, see him? Yes, and you can bring me some money when you come see him. Police want to know where Spelock was the night of the murder, but he has a plausible alibi, too. He tells police he was at his house all night with the baby. Did you stay here all night taking care of Casey? Yeah, I was here all night. Okay. He has a roommate who says he didn't hear Jim leave. And police find and interview this woman, who was up late texting with Jim Spelock most of that night. Did you text him Tuesday? Um, he sent me the text at 4.30. Just to make sure I have it all night. But while the clues may be sending the family in Jim Spelock's direction, law enforcement is not convinced. And when other people began to focus their coverage towards Spelock, they were able to tell me early on, don't go there, don't do that. Police even issue a rare public statement clearing Spelock on paper. It's unheard of. Police are going in a different direction, and they make an arrest. 